Hi, I'm Anjali from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. There I have been collaborating with Tyler Harter and Mike Swift and we have been working on a paper called Blending Containers and Virtual Machines. In this work, we explore and compare Gvisor and Firecracker, two new virtualization platforms designed by Google and Amazon. Both systems are hybrids, leveraging both container and virtual machine mechanisms. In this talk, I will be sharing with you some interesting results that we found, and hopefully that will give you some insights about these isolation platforms. Currently, when we deploy code in the cloud, there are two major ways to do it. One using traditional virtual machines, such as KVM, Zen, Microsoft Hyper-V, which provides hardware virtualization and runs a full-blown operating system. Originally, hypervisor-based virtualization was great as everyone got their own operating system, which means each guest has their own kernel. The downside is when you want to start instances in the cloud, you need to boot the kernel, which takes a while. Running many operating systems also take a lot of memory and have a high memory footprint. But the big benefit is that there is very little sharing above the hypervisor layer, which means we have very strong isolation. The second way of deployment is container virtualization. It uses a single OS to isolate applications, each having their own file system images with their own binaries and libraries. This lowers the boot time as we do not have to start a full OS and just need to start the application. Since there is a lot of sharing, it reduces the memory footprint of the application as well. But the downside is that the isolation is much weaker as the OS is shared, so a bug in the OS might allow one container to attack another. In the last few years, the pendulum has been swinging back to virtual machines because people want stronger isolation in the cloud. There has been an interest in bringing something that fits in the middle and blends these two solutions. To achieve this, there has been an ongoing effort. And as a result, we have a number of isolation platforms now, which are built on the idea of isolation closer to virtual machines, with performance and efficiency of containers. The deployment of these platforms are very easy because they integrate well with coordination engines like Docker and Kubernetes. So we need to shift our focus here and understand the technical differences. Having multiple platforms is great, but raises questions. Like application developers would like to know how they can achieve the best performance for their workloads and how vulnerable they are to attacks from other containers. It also raises question for developers of new isolation platforms in coming up with architecture that minimizes the dependency on the host kernel. For kernel developers, they may want to know the functions that are readily being used by these platforms and what can be done to streamline kernel support for them. In order to answer these questions, we take the initial step in this direction and compare properties of three secure isolation platforms. Linux containers, which I will refer to as LXC, Google's Gvisor, and AWS Firecracker. We chose Gvisor and Firecracker as they are from the largest cloud vendors. We also evaluate the fundamental performance via micro benchmarks and use code tracing to understand the use of OS functionality. In the rest of the talk, I will give an overview of the architecture of Firecracker and Gvisor. Then I will move on to some comparisons and results. In the paper, we go deeper and perform the experiments on four workloads. But in the talk, I will be focusing on CPU and network results. Let me first explain the architecture of Firecracker. Firecracker is a new virtualization technology that takes a VM and makes it close to being lightweight and as fast to start as a container. It simplifies virtual machine monitor by reducing the number of devices to just three, one button keyboard, which is the shutdown button, a virtual network and a block device. It starts with a lightweight guest Alpine Linux that removes some features. It provides a narrow interface to the host by reducing the number of system calls using strict seccom filters. Seccom filters provide a means for a process to specify a filter for incoming system calls. It is written in Rust, which comes with the benefit of type safety, memory safety, and limits the number of bugs caused by unsafe C code. Firecracker is used in production at AWS to run AWS Lambda and Fargate. While Firecracker starts with a virtual machine and makes it lightweight, Gvisor starts with a container and adds some of the features of a virtual machine to make it as secure as a VM. It implements a user space kernel called Sentry, which implements most of the system calls functionality on top of existing system calls. It starts when you run the application. All the requests coming from the application goes through Sentry, and depending on the request, Sentry can make further calls to the host. It also implements a user space network stack called NetStack, 
which reduces interference through kernel network code. NetStack is optional and we will see why when I discuss networking performance. Sentry is logged on to a small set of system calls, including no permission to open files. This is delegated to a second process called the gopher, which ensures that even if Sentry is compromised, it cannot open files. Gvisor is being used in Google's production environment like App Engine Standard Environment, Cloud Functions, Cloud ML Engine, and Google Cloud Run. Now if we look at the differences between the two, we see that Firecracker relies on guest and host kernel to service the requests coming from the application, whereas Gvisor relies on Sentry and host. If we consider the system call interface, we observe that Firecracker has a narrower interface when compared with Gvisor. They both have low memory footprint and are written in type safe languages. The key point to note here is that both try to enhance the isolation by limiting the system call interface by imposing a hard limit on the allowed system calls the guest can make. Starting from the Linux guest that, which implements around 350 plus system calls as entry points to the kernel, Linux containers block around 44 of them. Gvisor further brings down this number by allowing only 53 system calls without host networking and 68 with host networking. Firecracker is more aggressive and allows only 36 system calls, which are mainly needed for memory management, some networking, and file operations. While limiting the number of system calls reduce the attack surface of the kernel, we also need to look at how much code is exercised by the system calls that are allowed. Also, there are some system calls which are allowed on one platform and blocked by others. System calls like Connect and LSeq are implemented in the Sentry for Gvisor, while Firecracker depends on the host for these system calls. So in our work, we capture the code trace for each workload to get insights on the line of code executed for common case operations. We take the micro benchmark approach to look at the fundamental performance for the common case operations. To understand how the host kernel is used, we measure the code footprint using LCAF to capture which line of code is executed. We use Cloud Lab to run all our experiments on a machine with 10 cores, 64 GB memory, 480 GB SSD, and 10 GB PS NIC. Many of you might not be familiar with LCAF. This shows a snapshot of what LCAF captures. It shows what fraction of code by lines in each directory which was executed as part of a workload. If we look at a file, we can exactly get the invocation frequency for each line. Given this information, we can run LCAF to capture lines of code executed for each workload on all these platforms and compare the results by looking for differences across platforms in terms of what specific lines of code they execute. Now I will talk about some general findings. I will share the CPU and network results and then look at the overall coverage. Let me first talk about the CPU performance. For this, we use Suspense that runs a CPU intensive workload. The x-axis represents the number of instances that run this workload on each platform. And the y-axis represents a CPU speed per instance. This shows the host performance as a baseline. Now if we look at all platforms, we observe that all have comparable results for this workload. But Firecracker is a little bit slow due to its virtualized memory management, but not by much. All suffer from performance degradation as the instances increase. We expect a fairly different set of Linux kernel code to execute with Firecracker and Gvisor since they have different architecture. But we are wrong. If we look at the overall result for this workload, we see substantial overlap in the code executed by all three platforms. Gvisor has a lot of code common with Alexi, which is surprising as its architecture is different from Alexi. To understand this further as to where these differences are, we look at the word directory, which has the virtualization code. We observe that Firecracker and Gvisor have a high overlap here, and Alexi does not use this functionality, which shows up as zero. To get insights on the architectural code differences, we look at the Arch directory and observe a high overlap between Gvisor and Firecracker, even though they have different architecture. Alexi's footprint is lowest here, suggesting it doesn't rely on architecture-specific code much, which may lead to its easy import on different architectures. We further investigated what part of the architecture was being used and found that almost the entire body of code used in common by Firecracker and Gvisor was in the KVM directory. So optimizations to this code will benefit both secure isolation platforms.
To summarize here, GVisor, despite having a different architecture, shares a lot of code in common with LXE. GVisor and Firecracker rely a lot on architecture-specific code and also have high footprint in the KVM directory. I will now talk about the network performance, which we measured using iPerf. Similar to the CPU workload, the x-axis here also represents the number of instances and y-axis represents the aggregate network bandwidth in GBPS. Taking host as the baseline here, we see it is able to use the maximum bandwidth. Now if we look at all the platforms, we observe all except GVisor are able to utilize the maximum bandwidth as the number of instances increase. GVisor is the slowest here due to its user mode network stack, which isolates the network stack but has a price on performance. GVisor also has an option to use host networking represented by GVisor plus host, but here also we see the sentry architecture makes it slower than others and it is barely able to utilize the maximum bandwidth when the number of instances reach 10. Moving on to the network coverage result, we will first look at the overall coverage. Given that GVisor has its own network stack and Firecracker has a guest kernel, we would expect the amount of kernel code executed here to be low. But we are wrong. We both rely on host kernel for this functionality. And surprisingly, GVisor has a high overlap with LXE here, which is 71k lines of common code. Most of these differences lie in the net directory, where GVisor shares about 10k lines of code with LXE. If we move one level deep into this directory, we observe in the bridge directory that Firecracker does not have any unique footprint here, whereas GVisor shares some code common with LXE here and also in the code directory. To summarize it, we observe even though GVisor has its own networking stack, it is not able to minimize its host kernel usage, and if there is any bug in these code paths, it will potentially affect it. An isolating network stack in this case will not be of any benefit. It also shares a lot of common code with LXE. Similarly, Firecracker, which has its own guest kernel, still has substantial host kernel usage for this workload. In addition to changes in which kernel code is used, we also see large differences in how often the code executes, the infogation frequency. If we look at a code snippet in the file dev.c under net slash core that checks for the length of a packet against the allowed maximum transmission unit before forwarding it, we see that for this particular function, LXC has the highest invocation frequency, followed by GVisor, and Firecracker does not use this function at all. This suggests that even though these platforms have high overlap, they might have a different invocation frequency for some functionalities. Now let's look at the overall kernel code coverage, which is calculating by taking the union of all the lines executed in each workload across all the platforms. We observe that both GVisor and Firecracker, despite having guest kernel implementing a lot of functionality, still run more kernel code compared to native Linux. And GVisor in particular has a huge amount of overlap with LXE despite guest kernel, meaning it could still be vulnerable to bugs or other problems in the kernel. To conclude here, we see that neither GVisor nor Firecracker are best for all workloads. GVisor performs slow for network-intensive workloads, whereas Firecracker might incur some overhead for CPU-intensive workloads. Looking at the host kernel coverage, both Firecracker and GVisor execute more lines of host kernel code than native Linux. For a kernel developer, these results show which code paths could be optimized to better support secure isolation platforms. I think this is a promising area and has a lot of opportunities, the idea of what kernel code is executed. We can also think of going one step further and tracing what all is actually touched with each system call. This work can also be expanded to include other isolation platforms to get insights about them all. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me at anjdi.wis.edu or ping me on Slack. Thank you.